Uh, the purpose of this video is a demonstration and explanation of a 4-bit CPU built using Logic World. The CPU uh, reads a series of instructions and then executes them. In my CPU, the instructions are stored in ROM, read-only memory. And uh, the RAM is separate memory. I'll just go over the general layout here and then go into a little more detail. This is the ROM where the program instructions are stored. Uh, this here is the clock, which drives the uh, program counter here. The program counter presents the address for ROM on the address bus here, this A0 through A3. I can also write to the program counter. We have uh, RAM here to store and retrieve uh, values. Uh, CPUs uh, need some kind of fast, you know, temporary memory. And so they use registers. I have three registers. This is, this register here is my one and only general purpose register. And over here is my instruction register where I temporarily store whatever the current instruction is. Over here is the address register where if I need to temporarily store an address, that's where I store it. Over here, this is the ALU, the arithmetic logic unit that allows me to add some numbers. I have a simple ALU and that's all it can do is add. And finally, we have the control unit, which decides what to do for any given instruction. I'll go into a little more detail here of some of the components here. Uh, this here is uh, the clock. Uh, the clock mainly consists of two parts here. The first is an actual uh, timer. By using a delay element here with 15 tick delay and an inverter feeding back into the delay, the clock basically runs every 15 uh, simulation ticks. I feed that into these two components here, the AND gate and an inverter uh, to create a one tick pulse. Uh, I could show you a little detailed example of the one tick pulse here. There's a lot of wires, so let me uh, delete a few temporarily here. Okay, so if you just look at the AND gate here and the inverter here to see the one tick pulse, the input comes into one of the inputs of the AND gate and into the inverter. And then the, uh, the output of the inverter comes back into the AND gate. And then the output of the AND gate is our one tick pulse. And I'll just show you that. When I uh, pulse the clock one here by pushing this button, you'll just see it blip one time. Uh, the ROM is just a bunch of switches. Uh, my very, very simplistic design is that I have just alternating instruction followed by the data for that instruction. So ROM address zero, the uh, only one the low switch here is set so that's storing one and one in my instruction set means load immediate in other words it's going to load whatever is in 
uh, whatever is the uh, data for this instruction into the general purpose register. And that value will be three. I'll show you a little example of that in a bit here. Okay, uh, this hardware here is just to select rows and columns uh, based on whatever the address is coming down the ROM address bus. There's a ROM address bus and a RAM address bus. They are separate entities. And there's just a single data bus here, uh, D0 through D3. Okay, so that brings us to, let's say, the registers. Uh, I'll just, I'm not going to look at RAM here, but yeah, I could just read and write from RAM. There's 16 locations in RAM and 16 locations in ROM. So rather limited memory. But I'll go over the registers in a little detail here. The general purpose register here has a read pin, a write pin, four data pins for the uh, to send and receive on the data bus. And it has uh, a back end direct uh, bus, uh, read only. And that back end bus, which is just always on and always sending the contents of the register, is connected to the ALU. I'll get to that in a bit. Otherwise, uh, the register is just in individual bits. You can see here, there's a data line, an RD direct read data line, a read pin and a write pin. So when the read pin is one, it reads. When the write pin is one, it writes whatever is on the data bus to the general purpose register. Then I have a instruction register. Whenever I read an instruction from ROM, I store the value in the instruction register. It also has a backend read bus, direct read bus, and that is feeding the control unit over here, which we'll explain in a bit. Okay, and then we have the address register. So for example, uh, if I have an instruction like load from memory or store to memory, this is where I store it. It has a, you know, also has a read and write, except this has a dual port read. And that is so sometimes I have to have one thing on the data bus and still be able to read the address register to the memory. So uh, the memory bus address, uh, sorry, the address bus. So it, if, if the read P0 port 0 is 1, then it sends the data onto the data bus. If the read P1 is set to 1, then it sends the data down the address bus, and that's that's specific to the address register because I need to present its data onto the address bus. Okay, hopefully that was somewhat clear. Then the ALU, I have, you know, the simplest possible ALU. It simply adds what is on the data bus to what's coming off the direct register read bus. So effectively, it's going to add the uh, value of the register to another value from ROM, usually. Okay. Okay. Um, I am going to show you this thing running just a couple instructions before talking about the control unit. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to just set my, I'm going to turn my clock off. All right. And then I'm going to force uh, zero on the program counter. 
All right, the program counter is now zero. You can see it's zero. Uh, something I forgot to mention earlier, the program counter is needs to only count for four address bits because it's just a four bit uh, address space for both for ROM. But it also has an additional two low bits for the instruction step. <clears throat> and that's so instructions sometimes need more than one step to execute. And that's what keeps track of what step to execute on. So right now I'm pointing at address zero instruction step zero. So I'll come over here and I'll show you what it's doing in ROM. It is selecting ROM address zero right now. You can see the pin here is high and it is then reading the value of one here. So in my instruction set, one means load immediate, meaning load whatever uh, the instruction tells you to load into the register. And the next uh, word here of the ROM has the value three. So that's what it's going to do. It's going to put three into the general purpose register. So I'm going to do this one. Uh, I'm going to run through the steps that this thing executes here. And the very first thing it does is it goes uh, the control unit here gets a bunch of inputs and it has uh, control lines. So based on the inputs, it sets certain control lines on. All right, so what this is doing here is it's looking at the low bit of the address bus, A0 here, and it looks at the instruction step lines coming off the program counter. So these three lines here are all coming off the program counter. So at step zero of... Uh, address zero here, we're going to simply enable ROM. I think it maybe I thought there was a timing issue, so I do it in two steps. All right, so all we've done is enable ROM, and I could show you that ROM is enabled because if you see the D0 line here, that's coming off ROM and it's set to one like it should be because this is instruction number one. That's the op code is one. All right, so now I will come back here and I will activate one step of the clock by pulsing it. So now we're at address zero, but we're instruction step one. So instruction step one, we now go to this board of the control unit. Now this board of the control unit also enables ROM, but it also tells us to write to the instruction register. So it's going to write that value one to the instruction register for the next step. So if we're looking here at the instruction register, we can see that the right pin is set to one. It's reading, so you can see this here, D0 is one. And let's just temporarily ignore what's coming off the direct read bus but we've done what we wanted to do there. So that's all we needed to do at address zero. So I will go to address one here by advancing the clock. Now we're address one. So you can see that address one is uh, enabled here and the value is three. So now we'll go through the instruction steps for um, dealing with the data part of the instruction. So we know it's instruction one and the da data or value for uh, to operate on is three, and it's gonna write that three to the register. So let's go see what we're doing over here in our control unit. Uh, this board has been activated. Just a brief uh, explanation of how I kind of do this. The instruction set uh, step values, the low bit of the address, and the data line coming off of the instruction register are its inputs. So in this case, instruction uh, A0 is now 1 because we're at address 1. 
uh, the instruction step is zero and uh, the instruction opcode is one that's what's stored in the instruction register so this d0 here is actually coming off the instruction register so then i have some and gates and then i basically if if all the right things are true or false because there's inverters here it will it, you know it'll send a, a one down this top line here and then i'll just enable certain pins so right now i'm enabling rom and enabling register right so I'm going to write that value of three that was stored in ROM to the general purpose register. So I'll come over here to the general purpose register and the right line is one and the value three is on my data uh, bus here. So the data bus D0 is one, D1 is one, one plus two equals three. And that is all there is to that particular instruction. Uh, I'm going to keep this video short. I'm not going to explain all of this control unit, but this, the principle is the same. Uh, based on you know what's in the program counter, and uh, you know what instruction I'm executing, and that kind of thing, it's going to run a series of simple steps turning on certain control lines to connect certain parts of the CPU to do their job. I'll just rub the clock on here a bit. I'll just turn it on and you can see it in operation. You know, various uh, control lines are going on and off. The bus is uh, getting certain data, the address there's two address buses that are doing their thing. All this program is doing is storing a couple values in memory and adding them. So I could like monitor the uh, general purpose register here. This is a very simple program. I believe that the final answer here is, uh, do I have it written down? It's like, uh, yeah, right there. That's, I think that's the final answer. I'll show you one other thing here. See the program counter? Uh, it's probably hard to see. I'll just show it one more time. It goes pretty fast. Once this program counter gets to the very last instruction in ROM, I have a have that jumping back to register uh, instruction six. So you'll see that it'll go from the value 15 to the value six, and that's a uh, jump instruction. You'll be able to see the uh, program counter write go on as well. Should be another moment here. So rather than going to zero, it's going to go to six here. And it just did. So you can see that the bit four was off. All right. Uh, I realize that's not a complete explanation. I try to just keep it general just to give some idea how a CPU is, is built and logic world and how the general design works. Thanks for watching.